What's up guys, Danny Carlson here. So this video is gonna be all about strategies to outsell Q4 competition on Amazon. So whether you guys are Amazon sellers or not, if you're looking to get into Amazon, this is gonna be really useful information to just sell more during this crazy holiday period that we have right here. And while these tactics also work outside of Q4, they're especially important during Q4. So one really quick note that's uh it gives you an idea of just how crazy q4 on amazon is going to be this year so this is some stats that uh, were sent to me by my amazon advertising representative u.s holiday e-commerce sales will surge 35.8 percent to 190.4 billion dollars um, and it's going to offset brick and mortar declines and black friday and cyber monday will both top 10 billion dollars in e-commerce sales each which is just kind of mind-blowing so this puts it into perspective here, guys. So this is the growth. So the red is retail e-commerce holiday season sales, um, the growth. So typical growth is, you know, 12%, 15%. And then look at this year, 35.8%. As opposed to retail holiday season sales is, you know, is down a little bit this year compared to the normal 3, 4%. Now it's just 0.9%. And non-e-commerce sales are down 4.8% instead of a normal you know, one to 4% increase. So e-commerce is absolutely the place to be for Q4. And just a little bit about me, so you guys know that I know what I'm talking about. So I have a, a couple different podcasts. One of them is Actualized Freedom Podcast. That one's the one based around Amazon FBA. We have more than 100 episodes with uh, you know, lots of great experts in the Amazon space. And uh, those are some of the places I've spoken at. A lot of the uh, bigger Amazon Amazon seller sort of companies like Helium 10, Six Leaf, AMPM podcasts, and all those kind of things. And uh, my agency is called Kenji ROI. We've worked with Impact Theory, Odd Bods, Diet Direct, some of the brands you guys might have heard of. And that's just me on the motorcycle. I just like riding sport bikes, and I live here in Bali, Indonesia. Great place to live. So in this presentation, here's the meat of what you guys are going to learn today. We're going to create a rock solid foundation of listing optimization that makes marketing more effective. So this foundation is going to essentially make every single other tactic that you do work better. So definitely need to sort that out first. And then how to set up targeted holiday Amazon ads campaigns in five minutes or less. It doesn't have to be complicated. And there's a, a special tactic that I'm going to show you guys that can get a lot of exposure for a lot of targeted keywords without going too broad. And then we're going to talk about how to defend against some common Q4 black hat tactics. So a lot of these um, you know, shadier Amazon sellers are doing some black hat tactics to try to take other people down during Q4 and everything like that. So I'm going to let you guys know what those tactics are and how you can defend against them. So let's start with some of the fun stuff. So how to set up targeted holiday Amazon ads campaigns in five minutes or less. So we're going to be using this tool here, found.co.uk. This is just a, a free keyword tool that just makes concatenation really easy. So I believe the URL is found.co.uk um, slash keyword tool or something like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the first two columns. So make sure that column A and B are checked off. And those are the only ones that we're going to use. So on the left in column A, you can see there we have stuff like gifts, Xmas, Hanukkah, Christmas, present, giftable. Just try to come up with as many of those holiday related keywords as you can. So your list probably should be maybe twice as long as that one. I just made a short one here. And then in column B, you want all of the keywords that are directly related to your product. So let's say your product is um, a backpack, right? So backpack, hiking backpack, travel backpack, duffel pack. You don't want to go too broad here. You want to still stay very targeted um, because we're going to be using modified broad match, which I'm going to explain to you in a second here. But basically, we just want to get all of these together. And what the software does is it concatenates them together. So when we go to the screen on the right there, we click modified broad match, which is going to put it in the modified broad match format. But the concatenate button, number two over there on the far right, is going to um, concatenate is a fancy word for it's going to put A and B together in as many combinations as possible. So it's going to have gifts backpack, gifts hiking backpack, gifts travel backpack, gifts duffel pack. Then Xmas backpack, Xmas hiking backpack, Xmas travel backpack, Xmas duffel pack. So it's going to create every possible combination between columns A and columns B automatically for you. So if we go to the next page, you can see it's created 24 results from we just put in six inputs into column A and four into column B, and six times four equals 24, right? So if you put 10 in each column, you're just you're very easily getting yourself 100 different um, combinations of the words. 
And you'll notice there that there's a plus symbol in front of each one of these words. And what that does is that makes it modified broad match, which is kind of a secret. Most sellers don't know that you can use modified broad match in Amazon ads because they don't have the option for that to choose. So you have to actually put this into regular broad match and just add the plus symbols in front of it. And that makes it modified broad match. And what that does is you now have targeted exposure to thousands of search terms without going too broad. So if you just did gifts backpack in a broad match, for example, that's a really broad keyword. It's going to also show up for search terms like, um, you know, like giftable, giftable packs or just other words that don't necessarily have the word backpack in it. If you put the plus symbol in front of it, you do modified broad match, then the word gifts and the word backpack has to show up somewhere in the search term, but it doesn't restrict the order. So every single search term this shows up for is going to have gifts and it's also going to have backpack, but it might be backpack men's gifts, or it might be women's gifts, backpacks. It can, it can come up with a wide variety of search terms, but still be very targeted. So the plus symbol is very, very powerful in here. So while we have 24 targets, if we pasted this into a campaign, we have exposure to thousands of search terms that are all very relevant because we've used that plus symbol, because we specified that the plus symbol must be, or the keyword with the plus symbol must be in that search term. It's now way more targeted. So, um, this literally takes five minutes to set up guys and you can have exposure to thousands of targeted holiday search terms while still being very targeted. So one caveat with this, be careful about which, which keywords you're using here. Um, and you don't want to be too specific. So we're getting Hanukkah hiking backpack is maybe getting like three words is kind of the most you want to do in a target for broad match modified because it's going to expand upon that. Guest backpack is great because it's going to have a lot more exposure to more potential search terms because you're not restricting it as much, but be mindful about restricting it smart, right? You don't want to go too broad, like gifts men or something is going to show up for all sorts of random different search terms. Guest backpack is probably perfect, probably where you want to go, but you don't, yeah, you just got to be careful with what kind of targets you put in there. And now defense against common Q4 black hat tactics. So, Black Hat Amazon sellers always play dirty, but this is even more true during Q4 because Q4 is where a ton of the sales are. Like you saw in the, one of the last slides there, it's expected to be $10 billion each for Cyber Monday and Black Friday this year. So you can imagine if a competitor managed to take your listing down for Black Friday, then that's potentially a lot more sales that they would be getting that you would not be getting. And you, you know, some sellers make, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on a single day during during a Black Friday or Cyber Monday. So it can be worth a lot of money. The stakes are much higher, so you have to be sure to create a solid defense plan and be ready for some of these black hat tactics that um, some of these shadier sellers might be using. So be extra vigilant and keep an eagle eye on your product pages every single day during Q4 and make sure that everything is good. So here are some of the things that they'll be doing. So competitors will report your listing as um, adult, like a you know, restricted adult product, uh, pesticide, uh, or a number of other false claims to get you taken down. And it's really easy for them to do this. You see in the bottom right corner there, they can press the report incorrect product information button and just report it as um, you know, something that it's not. It could be as like, oh, this product doesn't match the description. They can choose a number of things and it only takes one of these flags sometimes for your listing to be taken down and then you have to prove that your product actually isn't a pesticide or it isn't adult or anything like that. So just be very careful. They're gonna do this like the night right before Black Friday starts or something like that. So how to defend against this? Um, I mean, unfortunately, sometimes it just will happen and there's nothing you can do about it, but there are a few things. So one, be as TOS safe as possible. So TOS standing for terms of service. So if you're breaking Amazon terms of service, like for example, lots of people will put uh, their logo in the main image. The main image on Amazon has to be pure white background, but if you're putting the logo in there, it just makes it that much easier for someone to report your, your product listing as uh, not matching terms of service, for example, and then your listing will get taken down actually legitimately, right? So just be following the terms of service uh, with little things like that. It makes you less exposed to this. And also highly recommended to use a listing monitoring service like uh, Century Kit is an example. I think it's really cheap service. Like I think it's like 10, starting at $10 a month or something like that. And it's gonna automatically notify you when things like this happen, like if a listing gets suppressed or you get, uh, you know, anything goes wrong with your listing, then they'll automatically notify you so you can very quickly 
try to remedy the situation. Another one is a string of fake one-star reviews. So competitors will make large amounts of orders for your product through many fake accounts and then leave one-star reviews on all of them in a very short time period. So, I mean, the only defense against this is you have to be monitoring your reviews daily and uh, report the suspicious, suspiciously high amounts of negative reviews to seller support and try to provide evidence. Uh, unfortunately, this one usually takes a while to get them removed, but often you can get them removed. Like if you all of a sudden got four one-star reviews in a row, first you know, want to make sure that it's not something actually wrong with your product or your shipping or something like that. But if they if they don't look legitimate, then try to provide that that evidence to seller support. So often these negative reviews they'll they'll be totally inaccurate. They'll be about like a different product. Like they're clearly your product is like a um, you know a, a coffee cup, and they're talking about um, they're talking about like paint or something like that. And there's no paint on the product, so you can use evidence like that to um, get them removed from seller support. But unfortunately, it does take a little while. And again, softwares like Century Kit can let you know when you do get a one star review, and you should be responding to that one star review, even if it's totally fake and everything like that. Give it a response because people that see that the seller is actively you know giving a response and, and taking care of each situation, it lessens the negative impact of these negative reviews. Another one too is click fraud. So Amazon ads click fraud. Competitors will click all of your ads on Amazon from many accounts, which wastes your ad budget because the way Amazon ads works is cost per click. So when someone clicks your ad, then you get charged from Amazon. And um, you know if someone on Black Friday wants your ad budget completely um, used up, they can just go click all of your ads and then all of your ad budget will be used up for the day and you're not running ads for the rest of the day. So to defend against this, report extreme fluctuations to high performing keywords to seller support. Um, many times it will get removed automatically later. They have pretty good click fraud um, detection and prevention. But um, another way that I didn't mention on here is keep your budgets high. So don't have restricted daily budgets during, during um, big days like like uh, Cyber Monday or Black Friday, because then if someone does do click fraud and tries to use up your entire budget, then you're still actually gonna be spending. And then maybe for the day, it looks in incredibly unprofitable and you lost a bunch of money, but actually later Amazon's gonna come and they're gonna remove the click fraud and you won't actually pay for it. So that way you're still running ads for the day. Now let's talk about probably the most important part about all of this is creating a rock solid foundation of listing optimization that makes marketing more effective. So every dollar you spend on ads will get a higher return because your listing optimization is basically a more efficient sales funnel. So it doesn't make sense to throw more money at a leaky funnel, right? You'd fix the funnel first and then throw more money at it so that money is getting a higher return. And a higher percentage of the customers who see your product will buy. So you're just taking advantage of that traffic that's coming to your listing. Um, and it, it feeds the Amazon ranking algorithm flywheel. So below is a picture of Amazon's flywheel. This is how Amazon has grown into such a massive, um, you know, trillion dollar company that they are now, is this flywheel. So they get, um, they have a bigger selection, which creates a better customer experience, which creates more traffic, which creates, brings more sellers to the, because they want to serve those, those customers, which creates a better selection and the process completes. And the second flywheel they have that kind of ties into that is that it allows them to create a lower cost structure and bring lower prices into the market, which then again creates a, a better customer experience. It's just a flywheel that every piece continues to rotate the flywheel faster and faster. And it's the same for the Amazon ranking algorithm. The higher percentage of customers who buy your product, the, the more customers are gonna see it, the more traffic that comes in, the, the higher the amount of customers that come in. It's just, it's just a very well-oiled machine once you get everything working well. And that's how the Amazon flywheel works. So what I'm gonna show you guys is the triple optimized listing. So these, this kind of graph just shows the exponential effect of the triple optimized listing. So if you had one of these three things that I'm gonna show you, your growth is gonna be you know, steady along the red line. But if you add number two and three, you can see the results get exponential. So it's not one plus one plus one equals three, it's one plus one plus one equals seven, right? It's exponential. So the triple optimized listing method is a method created by myself, Danny Carlson, and used by my agency, Kenji ROI, to maximize click-through and conversion rates on Amazon product listings in a reliable and repeatable way. It's our experience from creating more than 1,200 Amazon listings for our clients' brands. Uh, that number is actually quite a bit higher now. We need to update that. And all three are important to the success of a whole, and they're essential to understand. So 
The first one, I'm just going to touch on this briefly because it's a very complicated subject, but it's important to understand keyword optimization and the most important parts of it. So it's essentially how we show the Amazon ranking algorithm. Our product is the most relevant item for specific search phrases. And when it comes to keyword optimization, one thing people commonly get wrong is they choose the highest volume keywords, the keywords with the highest search volume over relevancy. So let's say that um, they're selling a kitchen spatula and the keyword kitchen accessories, super, super high volume keyword. Everyone's searching for kitchen accessories, but it's just not as relevant as the keyword kitchen spatula, for, for example. Even though kitchen spatula has way lower volume of searches based on your keyword search tools, it's just it's way way more relevant so someone searching for a kitchen spatula is a much more qualified customer so you don't want to optimize your listing for keywords like kitchen accessories like maybe you want to have that in there somewhere but you certainly don't want to be optimizing for the less relevant keywords and the title is the most important place for your keywords so you want to have your top three phrases in the title and i'm going to share with you guys a a good framework that we use to write our titles in a second and then use your subject matter fields for top phrases in exact match again i'm going to go into that in a little bit more detail and then your top five phrases should be in at least three different text fields in exact match so once you've identified what your top five keyword phrases are that you're going to be going for and when i say phrases i mean um you know a series of keywords so if it's kitchen spatula that's a phrase because it's multiple keywords but just kitchen or just spatula would be a keyword so here's the title structure that we recommend so starting with the main search phrase in exact match so kitchen spatula is your main search phrase you're going for then it should start exactly with kitchen spatula then we like to separate it with a little hyphen to put the next section which is the most important describing info and it's really important to separate it with these hyphens so that it doesn't turn into just a giant unreadable block of text um, that a lot of sellers do that and it's it seems like a run-on sentence it doesn't read very well right but you want to um, secondarily have the most important describing info for higher click-through rate so if people are scrolling the search results pages they need to be fairly sure that your product is the one that they're looking for for them to invest their time into clicking on your product right there's so many options on there and they want to be sure that they don't waste their time clicking on products that aren't what they're looking for so what is the most important key info that the customer needs to see in order to buy which actually is the second part of the triple optimized listing method and then you want to put that in the second bit of the title and then you can follow it up with your second main keyword phrase that you're trying to optimize for and then you want to probably follow with another main benefit of your product and then follow with the third main phrase at the very end so you're splitting up the three main phrases that you're trying to um, get really ranked for across different parts of the title you're not just repeating three phrases in a row because that's just very difficult to read and it looks like uh you know it's it's messy and it looks keyword stuffy and then the subject matter field. So a lot of sellers don't even fill this out. So this is where you can find this when you're editing your listing in Seller Central, go to the keywords and description tab and uh, down in the subject matter, you're gonna have to press the add more button four times so that you have five total fields and you can fill each of those five fields with 50 characters each. So a total of um, 250 characters. And you want to put your top keyword phrases in exact match order within those, those fields. So by exact match order, I mean, um, you know, if, if the phrase you're going for is, um, kitchen spatulas for women, you want to exactly put kitchen spatulas for women, not kitchen spatula for women or not women's kitchen spatulas. It has to be in that exact phrase order. And then last thing on keyword optimization, you want to place your top five search phrases across at least three text fields. So if these are your top five phrases, an easy way to keep track of that is to write out title, bullets, description, subject matter, and then um, put this in the same Word document or Google Doc as you're writing your listing out. And then once you're optimizing, once you've done writing your listing, you can just go Control or Command F and then search for Deck of Cards. And it'll show you exactly where it shows up. So you can see, oh, yes, it shows up in title. I can write yes for title, um, but that's the only place it shows up. So I need to get it in at least two more text fields. Now you're going to have to write it into the bullets and description somewhere. And, uh, Last thing on this guys is don't keyword stuff like just try to change slightly change the wording of what you've already written to have these phrases in there somewhere. So yeah, you know, if somewhere you wrote, uh, you're talking about cards, then now you can insert deck of in front of cards. And now it says deck of cards, for example. And now this is actually the most important 
part of the three pieces of the triple optimized listing key info optimization so it's identifying the key information shoppers are scanning for then prioritizing and placing it in strategic areas to maximize click-through and conversion rates and most shoppers are looking for specific product traits so the size uh, is it bpa free is it for the iphone x uh, pack of 20 like is there good value in this product and their brains have to scan and process a massive amount of info on any given search results page and then just instantly decide if that's the one they want to click on so one thing you guys got to remember is that amazon is a comparison shopping engine and attention that isn't expertly gained and held is going to slip straight to competing product pages it's there's so many other places for customers to click on other products on almost every single page on amazon very few exceptions to that and it's all about speed and ease of communication of the right key product info in the right places so here's an example of a search results page, right? So we see these products and the information that is highlighted in red is pretty much the only information a customer can see to make that clicking decision if they're going to click on your product. So that would be the main image. Very, very important. And then the first little bit of the title, like customers are not sitting here reading through everyone's entire title. Their brain is scanning and they're looking in the first little bit of the title, their, their reviews and the price to make that decision to click on your product. And since you don't have as much control over your price and reviews, you have a lot more control over your main image and the first little snippet of your title. So you wanna really optimize those two parts for the key info optimization. And then when you're on the listing, the highlighted sections are the most important. So the first three images are the most important pieces for that key info optimization. So if you're not using, for example, an infographic that very clearly displays the most important key information a customer needs to see to make that buying decision, then you're shooting yourself in the foot because that's the most important place to put that information. Uh, the first three images, especially on the mobile app, customers have to scroll manually through each, each image. So if you have your most important information on the seventh image, then again, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Second most important place is the first 100 characters of the title and even less on mobile shows up. Amazon cuts off um, everything on mobile a little bit sooner. So very important to follow that structure that we showed by putting the most important key information directly after the main search phrase that you're trying to rank for. And then third most important would be your A plus content description, which is um, halfway down the listing. It's like a fancy description that you need Amazon brand registry for, and you can have fancy images and text that you put in a custom layout about halfway down the listing. If you don't have that, you can just use a regular HTML formatted description which uh, that can be a little bit complicated. There's a, a blog post on KenjiROI.com for HTML descriptions that, that can show you how to write that code. If you do not have brand registry, then that's the best option. And then finally, the first 70 characters of your top three bullet points. So bullet points, a lot of people don't even read them. And we know this because a lot of customers will leave a uh, negative review based on something that you clearly stated in the very first bullet point, right? People will much more commonly look at the images and read the first little bit of the title. So bullet points are kind of the, the last most important place for that key info. And so here's an example of an average product listing. So in an average scenario, there's gonna be 26 visible competitor products on all of your product pages. So if a customer makes it onto your page and they're looking at your product, you're also competing against these 26 other competitors who are showing up on that product page. They scroll down to look at the reviews and they're hit with, sponsored products related to this item. And they scroll down again, past your description, and now they're hit with compare with similar items, right? So if you don't expertly keep and hold their attention, then it's gonna slip over to these other competitor pages. And Amazon just really, really rewards the listings that can keep that attention. And then the final piece of the triple optimized listing method is persuasive desire optimization. So essentially that's using sales psychology to portray your product as a bridge from your customer's undesirable current situation to an improved future situation. So a good framework for that is, now this is very common. You can use this in, in on your Amazon listings or in any of your marketing or anywhere really. It's really powerful. So aggravate pain, present product as solution, then illustrate a happy future without that pain. So by aggravating the pain, that's kind of, kind of digging in the, the nail, so to speak. So if a customer has a problem, like I, if your product provides the solution to the problem of, you know, the, your eggs stick to the pan, right? You want to aggravate that pain a little bit. It's like, so maybe you're going to show a picture of uh, someone, you know, trying to scrape, scrape the, the eggs off the pan like that, that last little bit and it tastes, tastes bad. And you're trying to aggravate that and make them literally feel that painful situation that it, your product solves. 
and then present your product as the solution was this awesome kitchen spatula is made of silicone and it just like glides the eggs off the pan super easily. And then you want to illustrate a happy future without that pain. Maybe you show the, the family enjoying some delicious eggs at the table and they have a big smile on their face because they didn't have burnt sticking eggs to their pan, right? Or the, the wife is, uh, you know, a uh, wife or the man, you know, I'm not trying to be sexist here, uh, <laughs> is uh, cleaning the pan in the, in the sink and there's no eggs on it and it's very easy to clean, right? And also you want to create a powerful visual for shoppers where they can literally feel the pain, then literally envision how their lives would be improved once they own the product. And the best way to do that is with lifestyle images, which I'm going to show you in a second. And sales copywriting, um, so copywriting with a W, not like copywriting is an in intellectual property, is a skill mostly based in psychology, not writing or English skills. So I actually started my agency, Kenji ROI, based on copywriting. Um, we were doing copywriting for Amazon listings. And just to give you some background, I have a terrible written English writing background. Like I, I think in high school, I had to take like the easy English class and I just was not a good student. And, uh, you know, I, at best, maybe I got a, a C plus in English. So it's not about English writing skills. It's all about sales psychology and working the sales psychology into the writing. So a lot of the best copywriters, uh, sales copywriters are actually not very good writers. And it's very common to break the, you know, so-called good grammatical rules to have a little bit better sales copywriting. So one really good book on that that I recommend for you guys is called Influence by Robert Cialdini. So The Psychology of Persuasion, very famous, very good book on that topic. So this is what I was talking about, how to enable shoppers to visualize how their lives will improve through owning your product. So use lifestyle images with a model that matches the customer target demographic. So, you know, on the right, we're trying to sell this uh, tea tree spot treatment clay to women who want more beautiful skin, right? So we want to portray a woman that has beautiful skin using the product. Makes sense, right? And you want to tell a cohesive story throughout all the images. So you can see both of these examples here, we are using the same model throughout the images, the images, they all fit with each other. We're using very similar graphic style and fonts and everything like that. And we're telling a cohesive story. These are not just random images that we're showing. Each one of these images is showing a very specific piece of key information that we want the customer to know in order to buy. We're not just uh, going and shooting a bunch of photos and choosing the ones that look the nicest. We're trying to tell that cohesive story to get the most important key information to the customer in the right order. The most important to the least important. And lifestyle images should be in the moment and specifically showing one very specific benefit for a good key info optimization. So one, one common mistake a lot of people show is they commonly show um, the model just like trying to show their product, like make the product look cool, right? Instead of actually showing the very specific thing that they want to show the customer. So for example, um, you can see in the, in the bottom left, someone is handing the gift card over to one of their employees, right? And that's exactly what we're trying to show. So great for on the spot appreciation. So we're showing on the spot appreciation. We're not showing someone like smiling, just like striking a nice pose with a really beautiful model face or something like that, right? We're very specifically trying to show in the moment. And then persuasive desire optimization. So the art of sales in written form is called sales copywriting. So again, copywriting with a W not with an R for intellectual property. So I think it's the single most valuable skill an entrepreneur can learn. And the reason for that is that it's really all about the psychology of sales. And you can work that into, um, you know, sales calls, if you're doing sales calls into your marketing materials, your ads, or your Amazon listings, really anywhere. And it's super, super valuable to understand this. Um, and it's very expensive to hire very, very skilled sales copywriters. It's gonna cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. So the best books on copywriting that I can recommend to you are Breakthrough Advertising by Eugene M. Schwartz. So this one actually recently just got put back into print. It was out of print for many years and it just created a, a cult following of people who, um, who was trying to get this out of print book and people were paying upwards of $1,000 for a used copy of this book on eBay at one point. Um, but now it is back in print and you can get it for much less than $1,000. <laughs> um, if you have only a little bit of time and you don't really want to dive into copywriting, but you want to get the, the best bang for your time that you put in there, then choose this book will teach you how to write better by Neville M. Medora. So that one is can literally be read in about 20 minutes. And it's just a super concise, no fluff book that 
will do exactly what it promises. It'll teach you how to write better and gives you some very good copywriting frameworks. So that guys is a triple optimized Amazon listing method. So to review here, keyword optimization, having the right keywords in your listing to optimize for the Amazon ranking algorithm. Key info, key info communication, key info optimization, essentially showing customers the most important information they need to make that buying decision. That's the most important out of the three. Then persuasive desire optimization, just creating desire within the customer for your product through persuasive sales copywriting and, and just really trying to show your product in action so they can visualize how their life is going to be improved after owning your product. So that is a triple optimized Amazon listing method. So that's the presentation today, guys. If you have any questions, then shoot them in the comment box here below. I'm on here and uh, happy to answer your questions. Or uh, if you wanted to reach out to me, there is our socials and a website and happy to talk to you guys there. So thank you so much for joining.